Hey everyone, it's Kayak Cliff. I'm out on a local lake in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, one of my hometown lakes. And uh, if you saw my video a couple weeks ago, kayaking down the Silver Springs River in Florida, I showed a new kayak. It's the uh, 12 foot, 12 foot 10 inch uh, Sea Eagle 393RL. Again, 393RL and I'll put the link for it in the description box. But uh, I'm out giving a full review on this on this boat. I've had it for probably three months now, and uh, I've had a lot of time to use it. And I wanted to spend some time in the boat to really give you a good thorough review. And um, so, stay tuned. But before we move on, if you like my kayaking adventure videos, which also include bicycling, camping, hiking, uh, some product reviews, and then I really need to ramp up uh, tips and tricks and things like that when we're out doing all these adventures. Uh, if you like them, please subscribe to my, my channel and please like this video and uh, hit the notification bell uh, to be notified when new videos come out. Uh, I really appreciate it. The YouTube algorithms really look favorably on uh, people following me and things like that. So, Without further ado, let's move on with the Sea Eagle 393 RL review. Okay, so the 393 RL, what is it? What makes it so special? Well, if, if you've seen paddle boarders out there, you've noticed probably that a lot of paddle boarders are paddling um, blow up paddle boards. And first time I saw that, I thought, well, how do you do that? Because anytime you blow something up, it's not real hard. And I just, could, I didn't know how you would stand on that without it, you know, kind of concaving inward. So what they're using, when they build these paddle boards and now the Sea Eagle 393RL is it's what's it's called drop stitch technology. So if you imagine there's two pieces of of you know vinyl PVC uh, outer layer and then woven in between those pieces are it's either hundreds of thousands or millions of fi of of um, filaments that connect the top and the bottom PVC outer layers. And it creates an intricate webbing inside the kayak. So what does that do that's a little different than in the past? Well, it allows you to pump it up to extreme pressures. And on this boat, it's 10 PSI. And when you pump up to extreme pressures, those fibers are pulling on each other and it makes this boat super, super hard. And that makes it for a boat that paddles very stiff, very uh, responsive, and it allows you to carry a lot of weight. Uh, it doesn't sag in the middle. So that's what drop stitch technology is. And that's what Sea Eagle is doing with a 393 RL. Um, when, you, uh, when you get the boat, uh, you can get it with a backpack. Most of the packages come with a backpack and it folds like five or six times to fit inside that backpack so you can uh, you know check it on an airplane if you have a very small car just throw it in a hatchback you can get in there real easy with it um, I typically just fold it four ways I, I lay it out I go in in and then one more time so it's more like three ways and then I pick up pick it up it's about four four and a half feet long and then I throw it in the back of my truck and that's kind of how I store it as well um, it's it's a very simplistic boat uh, when you take it out of the truck and unroll it or unflap it stretch it out before inflating it um, it's just a boat and there's very nice foot pegs that are adjustable that go that you install the first time the foot pegs are just super easy to use a little difficult to get in the first time but once you've done it the first time it's not bad um, like I said, I leave them in most of the time unless I'm really folding it up small. Um, comes with a very nice seat. Uh, and I'll get into the seat in just a little bit. Um, but that's basically it. It's a kayak, it's foot pegs, and it's a very nice seat. And everything is made very nicely. Um, the quality is really up there. Uh, that's one of the first things I noticed. So, you know, basically when you get out 
and uh, you blow it up, it comes with a pump and the pump has a pressure gauge on it and you're gonna pump it up to 10 PSI, that's pounds per square inch. Um, and there's three bladders. So there's three separate parts that you have to blow up. There's two side bladders and then there's a floor bladder. And um, I'd say it takes you five minutes to pump it up. It's about 50, 60 pumps per bladder. So um, it's a little bit of a workout. It doesn't take you long. You're gonna stop for a couple breathers. But once it's up, it is, it is ready to go. It's not gonna lose air. Uh, like some of them do where you have to keep on topping it off. Uh, again, it does a super job, um, you know, in terms of when you're pumping it up. And once it's pumped up, you're ready to go. Okay, now about the seat that I'm sitting on. Um, I was really impressed with the seat. Uh, as you know, I wasn't a real big fan in the, um, in the origami style kayak with the real thin seat that came with it. This one raises you up about two and a quarter, two and three eighths inches. Um, it's a very, very sturdy Cordura nylon uh, type product. And uh, it's, it's a high back seat and it wraps around your body. Um, another thing that's really nice is on the back of it, there's a big pocket, a zippered pocket, so you can throw um, you know, a repair kit in there, a first aid kit, a whistle, anything that you want to put in there for the day that doesn't have to be waterproof, unless it's a waterproofed item that you're putting in there. Just a very, very durable, well thought out, comfortable, and nice seat. And I haven't seen that in other options that I've had in terms of, you know, folding or inflatable type, you know, kayaks. So big thumbs up on the seat. I love it. Uh, for a life jacket, normally I, I use the NRS Ninja, my favorite life jacket. I can't use it in this boat because you need a, a life jacket with the back, a high cut back to it. And the high cut back will allow the higher seat back on the 393 RL Sea Eagle. It'll give you a lot more comfort because you'll sit back against the seat and the life jacket won't get in the way. So get something with a high back to it, uh, meaning no flotation on your lower back, only flotation, see if you can see it here, only flotation um, on your upper shoulders. That's the only place you want it on the back. One of the other things that's real nice about this boat is the, um, the capacity that it has. It's, it's rated for a 250 pound paddler, but that's not it. There's another 250 pounds for payload. And so it, 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 it'll hold a total of 500 pounds. Now, you don't wanna put a 350 pound paddler in the middle of the boat. You don't wanna put, because that's, that's putting too much weight in one spot. So if you evenly disperse the weight from the paddler to the gear that you're taking, you can paddle up to 500 pounds. And what does that mean? Well, in the, the bow, the front of the kayak, and the stern, the rear of the kayak, um, there is plenty of room. You know, right here I'm putting in a uh, 35 to 40 liter dry bag. And 35 to 40 liters is really big. And in the stern, in the back, I can put in a big Yeti cooler and a 35 to 40 liter dry bag in the back. And I can also put another 35 to 40 liter dry bag in the front. And that's, you know, 70, 80 liters easily. And then even in front of those, underneath the little covering in the front and the back, you could put a smaller, maybe 10, 15 liter dry bag. Uh, if you really needed to and, and you're still underweight, you can stack your dry bags and, and, um, and bungee them down. So you have a lot of capacity here to, um, you know, to carry a lot of gear if you're gonna do some overnight trips. And when I go back and do the Suwannee River in Florida again, I'm, I'm definitely taking this kayak um, because of the ease of packing it with, re, you know, compared to like a touring kayak where you gotta break everything down. Uh, here I can just take nice, clean, closed dry bags, drop one in the front, one in the back, get in the kayak and go. So I love the weight that it will carry. Now, um, you know, I'm six foot, this kayak, 
I think we'll easily go to a six foot two, six th foot three person with the, the, the foot pegs up front and, and how much leg room I have. Um, I was out paddling the other day and one of my good friends that I paddle with a lot, you've seen him on the videos, Doug, he wanted to give a couple words and show how this kayak does for a larger sized paddler. So I'm gonna cut away to Doug, let him talk about it for a moment, give you his insights for how the kayak performs for a larger sized paddler. I can't believe I lost the footage of Doug talking about his um, his thoughts about the kayak. So I'm just gonna narrate for you. You can see Doug getting into the kayak and initially it was a little squirrely because he's used to like a 33 inch wide kayak and this is a 28 inch wide kayak. But once he got in the boat, he did comment that it felt very stable to him. At the beginning, not so much, but after about 10, 15, 20 minutes of paddling, he really got the hang of it. Now, how does it paddle? Hey, it paddles wonderfully. It's very fast, very responsive. Um, it's a very rigid boat, and there's a plastic hard entry in the front and in the rear. And um, unlike on um, you know the origami style kayaks that I've been in before, um, they always seem to plow the water, not real efficient at cutting through the water. And you don't hear any noise on the front of this kayak. It cuts through very nicely. So I'm real happy with how it performs in terms of speed. Uh, it tracks extremely nicely. It, <laughs> extremely nicely. It tracks extremely nice. Um, it comes with a fin that goes into the bottom and it's a very, you know, very long fin. And I thought, you know, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to have that fin to paddle straight and for it to track nice. Um, but that's gonna be dragging on the bottom because it, it drags about this far. You don't need the fin at all. I don't, I don't ever take the fin out. I'm showing you right here on a cutaway what the fin, you know, how the fin goes in if you wanna use it. But I have found no situation where I needed that fin even when, um, you know, out in windy conditions. I think the kayak performs better without the fin. And without the fin, it's a heck of a lot more maneuverable. And if I want to, uh, if I want to lean in and I want to edge, if I lean to my right, the boat turns left. If, and again, you got to get some speed for edging. But if I lean to my left, and I lean to my left, the kayak turns right. So it edges wonderfully. It's very responsive. Um, again, I love the handle, handleability and how, and how this kayak paddles. Now, when this kayak came to me, it came as a package. So um, it came with the backpack, came with a paddle, and uh, came with a repair kit, came with a pump. I think it always comes with a pump. Um, but, you know, the paddle, you know, for a, um, for a kit paddle, it's a very nice paddle. It's uh, It's got a uh, carbon fiber shaft, and I really like carbon fiber shafts because they're easy on the hands. It's a very light paddle. It's not like you're getting an aluminum paddle uh, that's very heavy. You can paddle with this all day. It's stiff. It, uh, it has plastic blades on it. Again, with the Sea Eagle name on it, but it has plastic blades. I found this paddle to work very well. You know, I've always, you know, my, my main go-to paddle is the um, is the Aquabound uh, carbon fiber shaft with a plastic blade. Um, I just like plastic blades just because I'm pushing off of rocks and things like that. You know, they're nice and durable. You get all of this in this paddle. So if you do buy the package boat, then um, you're going to get a very nice paddle with it that works very well. And you're not going to feel like you have to, uh, you know, trade it in and get another paddle real quick. Now, because it's all open and you are exposed, with the paddle, I keep the, these, uh, these little grommets, uh, which protect you from paddle drip. I keep them extended out pretty far. And um, that helps keep the paddle drip from coming down the paddle and dripping in the boat. But with this boat, it's inevitable. You're gonna get a little paddle drip. You know, if it's um, for every stroke, you drip a little water in the boat, water is gonna accumulate. It's not like a sit on top where you have scupper plugs or scupper holes where it just self drains. Here, if you're getting a lot of paddle drip, you know, every couple hours, you're gonna wanna get out, just take everything out of the boat, lift it up, 
and pull there's two drain plugs in the back just kind of pick it up the the bow of the boat so the water drains to the back and it's extremely easy to drain the water out of this boat so again I don't call it a drawback it's just a reality it's just the way uh, a boat like this functions you just get a little water but it's no big deal the remedy is just pull ashore which you got to get out and stretch every hour or two anyway so uh, just get out and when you do that just pick it up and drain the water out and it's not a lot I mean if you paddle for two hours you're probably gonna have a quart in there maybe yeah probably about a quart of water Now another thing that comes with the boat, um, with the package price, right? It comes with the boat anyway, with the pump, is a uh, is a repair kit. I believe it comes standard. Um, guys, the repair kit. I was amazed. It's a it's a nice screw on top, uh, neon orange tube, and you open it up, and it's waterproof. It has like four big patches in there. It has the glue. It has the little sandpaper. It has a little working tool. I was real impressed with this simply because of the package that it goes into. It's solid. It's going to last for many years. You throw it in the back of your seat pocket, forget about it, and it's done. And I was just so impressed with this, uh, this repair kit because a lot of times, you know, a manufacturer sends you a repair kit for an air mattress for camping or for a tent or something. It's a little itty-bitty um, Ziploc bag you lose. You're not going to lose this. I was real impressed, and it's just a uh, testament as to the quality of this boat. They think it through all the way down to the uh, the repair kit. Now, this is a sit-on-top kayak. I'm sitting inside it, but it's more of a sit-on-top because it's open. Um, great for summertime adventures. Easy to hop out of the boat, get back in when you're swimming and things like that. Um, big plus for that. It's... Um, you know, the drawback is in colder weather, colder climates, you're exposed, whereas a sit-inside touring-type kayak in colder climates is going to be a little better. But whenever I paddle something like this, a sit-on-top in the winter, I just wear, you know, I'm, I make sure I'm not going out in rough conditions where there's a chance of tipping. Um, always a chance of tipping with a life jacket, and so you need to have a life jacket. But I'm usually in jeans, and I wear... Uh, almost knee-high neoprene boots that uh, uh, like muck boots that you use for hunting and things like that and any paddle drip from the paddle would just land on your boots and keep your feet warm so you could paddle this in the winter you just want to make sure that you have the right clothing and you have the right waterproof boots on that come up high enough to keep you from getting wet but um, Great boat all around, especially for the summer, but you could continue into colder months. Just, just be prepared for it. Now, because it is an open kayak, uh, unlike a sit-inside uh, touring-type kayak, is you can sit side saddle with it. And what I mean by that is, you know, the boat's going to rock a little bit, but, uh, you know, you can come around and... Uh, you know, you can come around and put your feet out, out of the boat, sit like this, and the boat's nice and stable. But it allows me to reach back into my seat back pocket or, or back to a cooler that I have back here, get what I want, get a fresh drink. I don't have anything back there now, but, uh, and then just come back around and, and you're ready to continue on, you know, with a, with a sit-in side touring type kayak, uh, you know, if you need to get something out of the back, you know, you got a bow and a stern hatch cover, you got to get out of the boat, open it up. Real easy to access stuff in the back. <clears throat> if you're going to fish out of this, you could put a milk crate behind you with rod holders on it. No problem in this kayak. You're not going to have any gear track or anything like that. It's just going to be, you know, for single function type trips in and out real quick. But, uh, I always get questions on, you know, how does it how does it work for fishing? It's not an ideal fishing kayak by any means, but you can make it work if you get creative with a milk crate. Well, hey everyone, if you made it this far, then you watched the whole review. Thank you so much for watching my my adventure videos and my review videos. 
uh, it really means a lot. And uh, if, if you want to learn more about this kayak or even purchase one, click on my affiliate link in the description box. And I, I, really, uh, I really appreciate you uh, purchasing through the affiliate link because it, it gets me just a little bit back to support my channel and support the continuation of uh, adventure videos like we do now. So, um, hey, safe adventuring out there, safe paddling, safe camping, safe hiking, safe biking. Uh, just get out there and get fit. Whatever your passion is, the outdoors can fulfill it. There's all types of things to do. And I just wish all of you uh, the best in all of your adventuring. Stay safe and God bless.